today's reading comes from John chapter 1, verse 35 to 39. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Um, in the passage we've heard read, we hear John the Baptist call Jesus the Lamb of God. And in an earlier version, he calls him the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And to our ears, that might sound a bit odd. But to the Israelites, that was like, we've heard about the Lamb of God our whole life. Um, so we, you know, we know that God created pe human beings for relationship, for a close relationship with Him. And we see Adam and Eve walking side by side with God in the garden, enjoying His presence um, freely. And then we know that sin enters the world and that that connection that we had with God is kind of severed. Um, there's conflict between us and other people and there's conflict inside us. And really what we long for is for freedom. We long for connection with God. We long to be intimate. We long um, for connection and like right relationships between us and other people. So if we look in the Old Testament, we see that um, the people of Israel, when they come out of Egypt, God gives them um, all these rules about how they can purify themselves. Um, and, and there's rules about like sacrifices that they have to make, about lambs and bulls and um, doves and all sorts of things. Um, and really what those were, were a way for people to um, be rid of their sin so that they can come and enjoy intimacy with God again. Um, but we know that, you know, all the sacrifices just pile up um, and even God says like, I'm sick of your sacrifices. I, I want to see that your hearts are changed. Um, <clears throat> and then in the New Testament, when we hear about, um, you know, Jesus is the Lamb of God and, and to the disciples of John, that would have been, what? Is, who's this guy um, and I think for them it was like I want to hear what he has to say um, because we know we know deep down that like we can't continue it's not um, kind of uh, we can't continue to bring all of these sacrifices day in day out um, and we know that our hearts are broken we need a change of heart um, and then Jesus comes and he dies for us and he takes away our sin and really that is our deepest longing our deepest longing is to be free from sin free from the consequences of sin free to enjoy relationship with God and with one another um, in intimacy and so um, when when Jesus asks the disciples what do you want um, and they just say we want to see where you live <laughs> but actually I think what they were saying we want to see who you are we want to see if who you are is the Lamb of God if you can really rid us of sin and give us um, you know a right relationship with God and, and they did they, they knew that they you know when Jesus came back to life it was proof that he was God um, and he was fulfilling God's longing to be intimate and close to us um, so I just want to leave you with little poem from a book that I've um, that I've got um, by a guy called Storm Coleman um, it says this communion has always been your priority Jesus help me to see what you saw what you died for what the pain of crucifixion was worth for you the healing of this conversation between us the priority of God on the cross was not behaviour management, it was reconciliation. Our broken condition and its effects, death, sickness, brokenness, hate, murder, anger, grief, 
pain, depression, anxiety, loneliness, was the enemy he had to slay to ensure our communion with him could be permanent and free. That's the good news. God came to create an open line between us and him, an honest line, a line free of fear, condemnation and dishonesty. He died for your true voice and he longs to hear it. Without honesty there is no intimacy, so speak freely and let God be kind to you today. Father God, I thank you that you know us and know our inner thoughts. You see the longings we have in our heart. Your longing, Lord, is to see each of us loving you, our Lord and God, with all their heart and soul and mind and body and strength, and to love all others too. Help us, we pray, to do this. Help us to draw near to you and to call out to you in prayer, Lord, and to worship you, our King of Kings, and bring before you our worries and anxieties. For you alone, O oh God, are able to do more than we could ever hope or ask for. For you are mighty, and nothing is impossible for you. We bring you our thoughts, and the words we speak, and everything we do. Help us to be kind and loving to those around us, and generous to those in need. O oh Lord, all my longing is before you. My sighing is not hidden from you, for you satisfy the longing soul, and the hungry soul you fill with good things. Lord, you see the longing in each of our hearts, the longing to be more like you, to be obedient to you, to love one another as you love us, the longing for life to be back to normal and the coronavirus gone, the longing to be with family and friends again, the longing to travel and see family again, like I long to travel and see my mum in Zimbabwe. The longing to be healed. The longing to see family and friends saved by you, Jesus. The longing to have children. The longing to cope with the children we have. Only you see the longing of our hearts, O oh God. I pray, Lord, today for each person listening to this. Lord, that by your grace and your mercy, that it would be yes and amen, Father, that our longings, all the longings of our heart, you would help us to have them met today. In Jesus' name, amen.